headline, of course, is the fact that they're saying that uh, there'll be 300 units of free power. Uh, up to three kilowatts, you have a subsidy. For the first two kilowatts, uh, uh, it, it's at a particular percentage, and then it tapers off between two and three and gets capped at three, three kilowatts. There's a national portal that has been opened, uh, and the response has been uh, humongous. Uh, there have been huge uh, applications. There is a budget of 75,000 crores. Uh, one crore households are to be covered by the rooftop scheme. Typically, per household, it will be between one and three kilowatt uh, installation. So even if you take a, a mean, a median kind of a number of uh, two kilowatts per household, you're looking at 200 crore, uh, uh, 200 crore of uh, kilowatts being installed. And that is 20 gigawatts. 20 gigawatts, uh, yeah. not very clear as to how long this is going to take, but given the response, and if there is funding backing this uh, as the government intends to, I think that 20 gigawatts is not going to take too long a time. Given the compelling economics of the scheme and the subsidy that is backing it, uh, and the whole whole uh, ecosystem that the government is creating to facilitate a uh, faster rollout of uh, this entire 20, 20 gigawatts of rooftop under the scheme. Uh, uh, we will pause there. Uh, I will ask each of these speakers to give an introductory remark uh, on on uh, uh, on their perspectives on the scheme, and we'll follow that up with the Q and A. Chetanji, can we start with you? Yes, thank you so much, uh, Vinayji, for uh, giving the wonderful uh, introduction. And, and uh, as you rightly said, I was so happy uh, that the solar rooftop was really forgotten in all this uh, megawatts and gigawatts of uh, installation. And therefore, uh, what Prime Minister has, uh, you know, brought it back, uh, and I believe that has to be very important component or very important share of overall solar installation in the country. So it's a wonderful news and as a part of National Solar Mission and all activities, we have always been wanting to do that and promoting it. One thing that I would like to uh, just bring uh, as a kind of a note of a caution that, you know, in Hindi we say, Ati Sarvatra Varjayet, or, you know, the prevention is always better than cure or conservation is always better than generation. And uh, what is happening in the country and particularly in the solar rooftop, that all those who are actually adopting to solar rooftop their energy consumption tends to increase because the electricity bill goes down. And when 300 units free, you definitely means uh, there'll be a overuse of electricity, misuse of electricity, inefficient use of electricity. And ultimately, I look at solar, not just uh, electricity term, but solar is also an opportunity to create job, also to solve the problem of global warming and climate change. When you look from that perspective, I think it is important that uh, we do not, uh, you know, overdo things. Uh, in particular, solar rooftop has potential to do that. I would have liked. I mean, I was doing backup the envelope calculation. I hope I am right in doing that. That seventy-five thousand crore is a huge money, and together with solar, can we not also, in, you know, improve the efficiency of the system? Can we not make a transition from a careless to a cautious user of energy? And one right thing to do is, you know. Can't we do other way that if somebody, let's say, consumes only 100 units of electricity, government gives him a 500 rupees as a, you know, payback uh, because he's a sensible user of energy. And if somebody does 200 units, the government gives 300. And if you do the back of the envelope calculation, Vinaji, and I, uh, somebody can uh, correct me, I think we can give 800 rupees per month uh, to a family, you know. So uh, I think the same 75,000 crore rupees can be put to a big use where we drive energy efficiency, where we drive energy consciousness, where we drive climate change, global warming and mitigation, and also adopt solar uh, electricity. So I, I would be very, very cautious in implementing this because solar is not just electricity. It should be used as a means to solve many other problems, including job creation and climate change. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Chetan. The wonderful remarks. Uh, we'll keep note of that and discuss more in the course of the conversation. Can I ask now Sharad to... Uh, speak for a minute. Thank you. Thank you, Amit. Good afternoon, first of all, to all the co-panelists and mm -hmm. all the participants who are there on the call right now. I think uh, uh, if there is one thing which is giving sleepless nights to all the policymakers across the world, uh, it is global warming and climate change. Uh, while we got so used to it that we stopped wondering about it, what is more important is some decisive action at all the levels, right from the policy making to the foot soldiers on the ground. And in this context, I think our government has taken an initiative to commit for a net zero journey towards 2070. And uh, by 2030, as an interim target, we have taken to add 
at least 50% of our installed capacity to come from non fossil fuels and uh, i see that all of this capacity addition cannot come only from utility scale rooftop uh, utility scale solar installations and uh, wind installations because it is land intensive and uh, uh, it's also evacuation infrastructure intensive uh, so uh, generally the experience in india so far has been that uh, the models which are more decentralized in nature which have the uh, stakeholdership and the ownership from multiple diverse spectrum of stakeholders uh, typically work well and uh, it is seen in the success of many cooperatives and many uh, decentralized uh, schemes being initiated uh, being implemented across the uh, governments so my view is that i think it's a well thought out policy uh, but as i agree with uh, chetan ji that uh, there is a word of caution in this that you know we need to look into the fine print of this in more detail uh, so uh, and we will discuss more about uh, this uh, scheme and what it means for this country in more detail thank you Th thank you sharad ji cecil over to you yeah thank you vinay Cha thank you chairman <clears throat> and uh, sarad mala so um, uh, in my perspective this is the uh, biggest uh, uh, the biggest thing happened in in my tenure uh, uh, in the solar industry like uh, talking about one crore house solarization which is uh, even though vinay was mentioning 20 gigawatt our estimate is going up to 25 gigawatt so in economic perspective uh, this is going to give a employability of around um, 17 to 20 lakhs uh, uh, people so that is a huge uh, that's it. that's that's going to be very huge and in in terms of sales manufacturing logistics and very uh, various parts of uh, aspects of uh, industry this is going to give a great um, impetus in the um, overall economy of india and um, yeah so we uh, now we are really going to see the real sunshine in india in terms of uh, solarization like uh, the overall uh, the capacity of rooftop uh, was total 11 gigawatt out of which rooftop was only 3.2 to 3.3 gigawatt whereas there is a potential of around 100 gigawatt in this country so there's a huge opportunity available to us to, in the country so with this um, uh, pm surya ghar which is uh, targeting around 25 to 30 gigawatt that will give a great uh, jump start in the overall um, in, uh, uh, residential segment uh, with respect to adani we are uh, we are already uh, uh, geared up for this we have a 4 gigawatt uh, cell and the manufacturing and we are adding with all um, wafer ingot and um, poly and mg silicon and all the other accessories so um, we are also trying to uh, optimize the cost in the country so that it is going to be affordable for any indian any panel can be an affordable uh, product for the uh, for an average uh, indian so like way Adani has uh, uh, invested and going to invest and you would have seen yesterday's announcement from our chairman we are going to invest 1.2 billion in the renewable energy in the next financial year so with all that uh, Adani has prepared and they are we are um, all uh, looking forward for this scheme as a very uh, is going to, going to be an important uh, uh, this, uh, uh, decision in the in the rooftop segment and uh, we look forward a uh, lot of employability happen happening in this country over and uh, over and above the uh, the the uh, as Chetanji was rightly mentioning uh, though there is a there will be a, some control on the usage of electricity however we will see so so many people will have access to electricity or they will be using electricity upfront instead of even our middle income group in the country is showing hesitation to go for a better lifestyle because of the surge in the power bills and all so that way, uh, it's a sum up. I think this is going to be a, a bold step. Uh, not only that, it is going to be a great lead. Uh, I mean, there's going to be a great uh, opportunity for every industry, vendors, and uh, other uh, related segment to uh, 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 do their part in the in the in the India's solar mission. Thank you. Thank you, Cecil. Uh, good insight into what it means for the solar value chain. Appreciate that. We'll discuss more during the conversation. Swapnil, over to you. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, co-panelists. Uh, so as with this scheme, uh, I think first time in India, the retail solar market has opened up. Uh, the utility and large scale rooftop solar market is more matured uh, and there is, there is easy access to the financing. Whereas uh, in rooftop solar, it's a retail market, though it is there are there is a hefty subsidy of around 78,000. Uh, but still, there is one 1.5 lakh of capital, uh, which which required for consumers to put in 
for setting up the solar plant and there is there is a gap in financing for easy access financing and i think the government is is pushing up the financing access uh, uh, the loans the financing should be quick uh, the way we get nowadays personal loan uh, it should be collateral free and it should be easily uh, the there has to be transaction convenience so on on from ecofi uh, ecofi is, is a green only nbfc of india we are backed by government of india nif and government of uh, uk fcdo i think a year back we established until date we have financed 4000 households uh, we have seen very strong very good uptake uh, across all the states and yes there is a gap in financing i think the way uh, uh, any auto industry housing industry or consumer durable industry has had seen a rapid scale up after uh, easy financing availability or digital financing uh, availability uh, in solar uh, i think it is yet to become mature but the financing awareness across uh, among the installer community will play a vital role because whenever we as a consumer we go to buy a fridge or a ac or a or a two wheeler uh, the sales person know that his his equipment is going to sell Uh, uh with the financing with the combination of financing the product similarly in solar industry when the solar installer will know that financing is very vital and while pitching uh, a product to the customer if he can if he can if he can brief about the financing products then for customers it can be a quick decisioning the sales cycle will reduce down and there will be a point of sale so uh, so this is what i'll be uh, bringing on the table uh, thanks a lot vinay ji I think you are on mute. Thanks, Swapnil. Uh, appreciate the insights on uh, the issue of financing. We'll discuss more in detail. Uh, so uh, the the headline that has probably cynically got uh, the most eyeballs is the fact that there is about three hundred units of free power per month for every household. Uh, what was not clear to me and uh, uh, that is that the government portal doesn't speak about how it's financed. Even if you look at the the budget approved by the cabinet for the scheme out of 75000 you have 67000 set aside for the central financial assistance which is the cfa subsidy how is the 300 units per household per month going to get financed uh, this is i mean open to the all the panelists uh, this is something that has uh, uh, befuddled me a bit uh, because there's no there's no separate uh, budget for actually funding the discoms for this free power that the government has promised it's not there in the budget what is there is a substantial part of the budget of 75000 crores is a cfa subsidy how is this getting financed well if i can pitch in uh, vinay ji i think it's just uh, it's not going to be absolutely 300 units of free electricity as such what is financed uh, is the installation of either one or two or three kilowatt solar system for which the financial assistance is very clearly laid out and then sub- suppose somebody puts uh, up to 300 kilowatt of uh, solar panel uh, the uh, you know and uh, all those households will be net metered are connected with yeah. the grid and therefore that 300 units uh, that will be generated uh, will be kind of considered as a free uh, for the user but uh, i think which is real- what which is what i thought you are absolutely it's right not in the real term, it is not free. actually it's not actually extra power owned above this cfa subsidy it is what this financed and subsidized uh, capacity will generate which is what is probably being referred to but that is they're being very coy about it so maybe it's a marketing spin that uh, the governments have learned to make and especially in a pre election scenario we appreciate that but yeah i think that uh, is a good insight chetan ji uh, i will go back to the financing part with which swapnil had raised that uh, even after the cfa subsidy of uh, 60% uh, and even most of the banks have come out with schemes uh, where they're insisting on a margin of 10% with uh, the balance uh, amount coming as a very concessional loan what is being said by most of the banks which are there on the portal it's a, it's about uh, 7% uh, uh, to the scheme so that still leaves some portion to be funded uh, do you think that that will be a big dampener because we're talking about uh, households which are just 2 to 3 kilowatt and uh, how does the government uh, propose to meet the challenge and how do players like yourself your own company how do you see this as an opportunity to to really bridge wow. that uh, capital gap yeah 
so uh, I, I don't we don't feel that this will act as a dampener because yes there is one point if it is a three kilowatt capacity then seventy eight thousand is a straightforward subsidy and customer contribution will be in the range of one point three lakhs. So these are the retail small retail loans uh, which can't be processed or serviced through a conventional banking mechanism where customer has to go to the bank branch or branch nearby to his his residence submit some documents and then the bank will process the loan file this ha this this needs a different angle of digital financing where customer sitting as, at his home filling in the application he is getting instant decisioning he is getting opportunity to select the vendor uh, in his in his area which i think pm suryagar mobile application has enabled each and every customer to do this process he his his financing will get approved instantly he will select the vendor he will negotiate the pricing with the vendor and his loan file along with his system uh, uh, selection will get processed and further he will be able to install the file so this is uh, it's a complete digital economy paperless application has to be there and it has to be a completely end to end uh, digital journey uh, i think we at we, we at ecofi we have developed uh, we have partnered we have also partnered with government agencies nodal agencies like up neda not only from a business point of view, but to promote the financing awareness, because this is so, so how much are you underwriting out of this uh, 25 gigawatt? What is the market share you look at probably to underwrite? Uh, so, so right now the financing penetration is in the range of 15 to 20 percent, uh, uh, because there is no awareness uh, of the financing product, and right now the the, the market it just opened up, uh, and initially those who have chosen the rooftop solar are the premium segment or, or the creamy layer of the consumers who could able to afford it on capex but 2 kilowatt 3 kilowatt is the range where it, it's a it's a middle portion uh, of, of the society where they need easy financing access and instead of putting in capital they prefer buying it uh, on no cost emi or a deferred payment matrix i think this small mid segment of 3 to 5 kilowatt is a very big this is a mass segment and digital uh, a financing solution will play a vital role over here. So if banks, uh, PSUs can come up with digital solution, I think government is also trying to solve this through Jan Summer portal, which is which is about, which is going to launch uh, uh, very soon, which will be a digital uh, financing solution to uh, for the renewable energy, specifically for the rooftop solar. So we see uh, right now we hold around 25% market share. So in one crore, we are targeting around 20 to 50. 15 to 20 percent market share uh, because we are focused and we only do this we are only a green uh, a lending institution so those who are coming up with a focused and dedicated lines uh, uh, and approach i think they will be able to uh, uh, serve the industry in better way thanks for the candid uh, sharing of uh, numbers uh, appreciate that so my next question is to cecil and uh, this is more to do with what the scheme means for solar manufacturing in india we have had a multitude of schemes. We have the PLI, we have the protection given to domestic manufacturers under both the ALMM scheme, we have the tariff barriers, we have huge tariff barriers and importer modules. And now you have this scheme which comes and says that, you know, this entire 20 or as you say, 25 gigawatts is going to be, I'm not sure, the DCR modules or whether it's LMM modules, I'm not sure. I can throw some light on that and what it actually means for the Indian manufacturing supply chain for uh, solar. Cecil. Yeah, Vinay, um, I think there was a meeting held in uh, Delhi regarding the clarification of this and it was clearly articulated that um, for uh, availing this, uh, the, the panel has to be DCR, though there is no written document made available. But uh, uh, if, you, if you're, away, let's say if you're putting up a 5 kilowatt system, you can go for a 5 kilowatt system, but again, if you, you will, your uh, subsidy is capped at 78,000 rupees in which the three kilowatt system has to be DCR. Okay, that is the uh, and the clar clarity we got. Accordingly, we, uh, we uh, as, a, as Adani, from Adani side, we, we I, as, as I mentioned in the initial time, ki we have... Cecil, if you could uh, tell the audience what uh, they mean by DCR, not everybody understands. Achha, DCR is domestic under requirement where the cell has to be made in India. So in India, there is a capacity existing 6.5 gigawatt as of now, 6,500 megawatt in which we are manufacturing 4,000 megawatt, which is approximately 62% of the total cell manufacturing. 
So any panel with the domestic content requirement, sell made in India will be eligible for the subsidy. That is uh, central financial assistance. So it is a clear uh, direction from the government of India. Now, this scheme, which is we are talking about 25 gigawatt approximately, whereas we have a uh, cell capacity of only 6.4 gigawatt. So there is a huge uh, gap in terms of availability of uh, DCR module. So uh, uh, in, in, in anybody can make an assessment that this is not going to end in one year or two years or even three years. So it will go for uh, more because till the time we have ample production of uh, DCR uh, uh, panels in the country, this this scheme will get be, will be extended. Number one, number two, uh, the uh, with respect to the uh, uh, other accessories. Now, um, we, we, though we have uh, few various uh, market price available in the country, even now uh, we don't have a complete ecosystem available in the country uh, for a panel. Uh, it can be aluminum frame, glass, back sheet, all these things. And even uh, beyond cell also like ingot, wafer, MG silicon, those kind of backward integration is not, not also fully not on in the country. So every uh, everybody has got an opportunity now uh, because the domestic manufacturing segment is going to have a, a real exponential jump in terms of uh, their overall uh, growth in terms of production. And uh, the new players can also come in. And I think uh, the, the even though PLI in the initial PLI there was not much activity happening, but with this PM Surya Ghar, there will be a lot of excitement and encouragement for uh, Indian manufacturers to have more production and um, um, manufacturing capacity available in the country. And um, this is uh, uh, and I think I'm hearing the latest news that LLM is going to happen uh, maybe from April or April mostly, that is the latest update we are getting from various uh, sources. So with that, uh, domestic segment is going to have a real, real, you know, great um, uh, uh, start uh, or not start, I would say, there will be a lot of encouragement for them. And the what all things which was not happening in the last two, three years because some ambiguity with respect to LLM, this will happen and uh, uh, Indian panel will have a different, uh, uh, will definitely play a big role in that. and. And uh, 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 respective of because small companies will have motivation to get into the DCR domestic content requirement uh, segment, so that uh, they will have a market in this uh, country. And as I mentioned right right from the beginning, that uh, this is going to be the biggest industry in the coming two three years. And with all um, uh, we uh, as a cap see not only for Adani anybody per se in that uh, solar manufacturing. Uh, there is a there is a room for everyone uh, to be there in the market and uh, at least for two three years there will not be much uh, issue in terms of to find a customer because the customer is already available in front of you and the government is also giving a lot of uh, advertisement and a lot of uh, hype is going around with this scheme and all and once you target as uh, Swapnil was rightly mentioning once you get into a retail segment of any industry then that is going to be the great thing can happen where the penetration is going to be very faster and um, any middle income group can afford that. Tomorrow we'll see a, a solar panel like a, a, a television or a D2H in any, any household. It is no more going to be a luxury for anyone. Thanks, uh, Sachin. Mean, I share, I mean, thanks for the optimism around uh, what this means for the solar manufacturing system in India, value chain in India. Uh, I take away that uh, the lack of a solar capacity, solar cell capacity can be a bottleneck. Yes. And ramping it, uh, ramping of that is crucial to uh, really make this scheme a success if they insist on DCR modules. Uh, appreciate that. I think that's a key takeaway that I have from what you've said. My next question is to uh, Chetan ji. Uh, Chetan ji, we have been uh, uh, really uh, been uh, talking about energy swaraj, uh, and uh, you've been an icon in this space uh, for a long, long time. And uh, forget about the uh, incentives and the carrots that the government has offered. Uh, to make this scheme popular and help scale rooftop capacity. What does this scheme mean? What does 25 gigawatts of uh, rooftop capacity, which may be coming up in four years or five years, what does it mean for energy Swaraj and how how a large part of India looks at uh, energy autonomy or energy independence? Well, thanks. Uh, uh, it's uh, uh, from the overall energy perspective, as I said, I, uh, I founded this Energy Swaraj Foundation with the purpose to establish Energy Swaraj or energy independence. And uh, there is a greater need now than any time else because uh, the uh, carbon emissions are still rising. The global warming is happening faster than ever. Climate change impact are visible everywhere. And therefore, I keep saying that we have to move away from the wrong energy to the right energy. 
uh, and the right energy is of course the one uh, solar energy because it's going to be there as long as we want humanity to be, to be there so that's a great thing and uh, it means a lot uh, because uh, this particular scheme has given as i as you already said it was a forgotten child but it has brought the rooftop in the in the forefront and because um, the nature of solar is as such that it is available everywhere and people are available everywhere people are living everywhere the needs of energy is also everywhere and therefore generation should be everywhere and from that perspective the rooftop solar uh, is is a you know more ideal solution uh, for uh, promoting solar or adoption of solar or becoming energy independent uh, and i keep saying that we have to go away from the wrong energy to the right energy but it has to be done in the right way and at the right time and what is the right way as i as i brought in the beginning also it is important that you know we do not become the careless user of energy and it is unfortunate that actually it is happening like that as a tendency of humans to do that and i would like to quote an example here that when i was my yatra you know was going in the uh, by the way for all audience i i have pledged to not go home for 11 years i am doing energy swaraj yatra i live in a bus and uh, i can show you uh, Uh, where i'm uh, right now so i'm sitting in my bus and uh, uh, i live in bus so uh, the point that i wanted to bring is that uh, uh, the we have to switch to solar in the right way and I, when i was going to gujarat with my yatra i was so happy to see a lot of solar system everywhere and i said wow this is a developing state you know but after some 20 days i became sad because after my lecture somebody came to me and said sir thank you so much you opened my eyes i said what happened he said sir my sister called and said you know uh, bhaiya uh, i have put 6 kilowatt solar system at uh, you know at rooftop and pehle ek room mein ac tha abhi teeno room mein ac laga liya hai and fir bhi bijli bachti batao kya karenge you know so that is the problem with the use of solar energy for saving money and use of solar energy for saving environment are two different approaches you know we have to really understand this i hope ministries and niti ayog understands this that we want to use uh, we want to save money then the your uh, objective function is maximize the generation generate as much as you want you know so a uh, user will go from rather 2 kilowatt to 3 kilowatt 3 to 4 kilowatt because the businessman will actually ask him to you know install more but if you want to use solar energy to also save environment then your objective function is minimize the consumption and that are three two different approaches and that's why i'm saying i'm saying it's a great uh, a scheme uh, for energy swaraj or energy independence i only wish and pray that uh, the solar should not become the problem 2030 is down the line because uh, you know when i if you look at any technology that it has a side effect and i did my phd in solar so making solar panel means you have to mine silicon silicon is a high melting temperature you have to convert into silicon crystal you have to you know 1800 degree centigrade three times you have to melt then you have to convert into solar cell then you have to convert into module for making module you require glass you require aluminum frame you require copper wire you require iron structure you require inverter to process the power now all these equipment and appliances have their own you know way to mine and put energy and chemicals and there is some it is definitely much less than coal based electricity but there is some environmental damage that we all uh, that it result in using solar energy therefore prevention is better than cure and conservation is better than uh, you know generation so before we jump on to solar uh, by the way i have created this formula many people now follow it's called amg formula for switching to solar and we need to switch to solar 100% again i'm talking from the climate perspective because carbon emission is a life of 300 years so many people feel and they are shy of saying that we need to switch to solar energy 100% but i keep saying there is no other choice we have to switch to solar energy 100% but follow this amg principle what is amg approach a is avoid m is minimize g is generate g is generate so avoid use of energy as much as possible even if it is solar energy because solar energy also has some environmental impact if you cannot avoid minimize it use energy very efficiently and there are beautiful very efficient appliances available led is a great example of that Uh, there is a bldc fan now coming into the market there are five star rated appliances so avoid by one third minimize by one third and generate only one third uh, and generate wherever you are locally and when you follow amg i keep saying you can avoid saying omg oh my god 
solar is expensive oh my god rooftop space is not there oh my god policies are not there so switching from wrong energy to the right energy in the right way is absolutely very very important approach and uh, otherwise you know we the modern humans we are all expert in solving one problem and creating another problem right and that's why with the growth of technology and economy uh, the water is getting polluted air is polluted global warming is happening life is getting depression levels are increasing so let us be very careful and uh, let's become a cautious user and i hope somewhere we can build a wonderful way that 75000 crore can be used in so wonderful way that it not only promotes adoption of solar energy or energy swaraj but also it promotes energy independence uh, and energy efficiency and energy cautiousness uh, uh, in adoption so those are the always a caution and i would always recommend the 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 government to probably modify the scheme to a level uh, that it becomes a win win and win solar mm-hmm. energy adoption efficiency and cautious user of energy and government can do the same thing all three things it can achieve in the same 75000 crore rupees of investment thank you chetan ji i think that's a good segue to my next question to sharad and sharad has had the experience of working with governments and handling very very large projects and uh, a few things that the cynic in me uh, says that what could go wrong see we already had a, a cfs scheme earlier a rooftop residential was subsidized though at a slightly lower level you just have increased the subsidy doubled the subsidy and focused it on the really uh, small end of the rooftop segment but the key key thing has been finance i mean uh, okay i get a loan from swapnil and then the problem is solved but the third and the most uh, important uh, bottleneck which really has throttled the growth of uh, solar rooftops in india is the attitude of the discoms and the whole attitude towards net metering uh, and this is going to mean that balance sheets of discoms will take a further hit the entire power from this 25 gigawatts will be coming at during off peak hours so you you have peak demand between 6 am to 10 am in the morning peak demand between 6 pm to 10 pm in the morning and this entire generation hits the grid and the discoms have to take that power and compensate the uh, compensate the households in the form of uh, credits in the next month's bill and i i believe that it it is going to damage discoms uh, financially significantly and uh, will invite an adversarial kind of a Uh, outlook towards the scheme from the discoms and how do you think the governments uh, will typically handle this attitude which has always been there it's a legacy problem and it's only going to get amplified uh, which means more losses for the uh, government uh, for the discoms especially in state level how do you think uh, government would go about mitigating this uh, attitude problem and the financial problem so if we step back a little bit and look at the larger picture uh, i think uh, in the entire power value chain the distribution is the weakest link and uh, out of all the 55 discoms in india we are uh, right now sitting at around 60000 crores of annual losses so and uh, going by what you say the financial status can even get worse uh, and uh, uh, i think uh, uh, especially for the discoms in the country uh, there is one silver lining in the scheme and that that opportunity for them comes in the form of uh, uh, you know reducing their immediate capex reducing their immediate capex in the residential segment and uh, uh, then uh, the surplus power that they save especially there is a, there is some back of the envelope calculation which i was doing and which will actually help the discoms to cut down at almost approximately 15% of their tnd losses uh, not in universally in all the segments but in areas where there is a high density of metering and in the last mile areas there is a potential to save almost 15% because you are generating power at the point of consumption and uh, this will put in uh, more power in the hands of the discoms which can then be diverted to uh, industrial and consumer segments which are typically better paying segments to the discoms uh, so that's one uh, silver lining that i see for them and uh, there might be some marginal cost reduction in their operational and administrative administration costs uh, but uh, as you rightly mentioned uh, there is going to be some kind of uh, revenue reduction for the discoms as you rightly mentioned all this 25 uh, gigawatt of uh, rooftop power is going to reduce the bottom line of the discoms to that extent uh, but uh, but if if uh, because this is the segment that enjoys cross subsidies from the cni segments 
i think that you know the state governments will get a more breathing room in terms of cutting their cutting down the cross subsidies cutting down their uh, uh, welfare uh, bills and then the money can be the money that is being collected from the cnda segments can be used for gainful advantage uh, uh, having said all of this i think what's more important is to tweak this policy a little bit to make it more lucrative for the discoms uh, uh, one of the assurance that was given in the scheme was to uh, provide some kind of incentives to the discoms uh, for those discoms which will uh, attain the targets in terms of the number of rooftop solar systems uh, yeah. that will be installed in their service areas there are some incentives which are being assured to them uh, we have to see how these uh, rules will uh, roll out over a period of time and uh, to address the specific point that you mentioned uh, uh, vinay uh, the power is being generated during the off peak time and uh, uh, there is there is demand that exists during the peak time so perhaps the government can think of uh, introducing the time of the day pricing where we incentivize the uh, consumers uh, to produce the electricity at the time of uh, higher tariffs and uh, we can also use that as an instrument to do the load balancing uh, in the residential segment and uh, uh, i think one more la- one more uh, incremental change that we can think of bringing in this in this scheme when it is being implemented on the ground is that uh, there are certainly some capacity limits that are there in place uh, like in india we have two kinds of metering system in place there is a net metering and then there is a cross metering uh, so consumers prefer to have net metering while the discoms will always prefer to have cross metering in place uh, so the the electricity rules in india mandate that if you go for a rooftop solar installation which is greater than 10 kilowatt you have to go for gross metering and you don't have a choice about it so uh, when we leave it to the market uh, i believe that uh, you know uh, and when we leave it to the market there is a possibility that this capacity will be defined by the market itself and uh, uh, when we increase the cap on the net metering capacity what happens is it will act as an impetus for the entire rooftop industry in the country and uh, 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 i think it has been a fine balance between uh, uh, the revenue outgo for the discoms and at the same time the potential savings that can come in the form of reduced losses for the discoms so thanks, that's sir. my take on this thing <clears throat> thanks sir i think a couple of very key takeaways uh, which i think the audience will appreciate is the fact that you don't attention to the fact that this could mean a, def- a deferment of capex especially on uh, distribution augmentation augmenting the transformers and the last mile network uh, that could happen because of the considerable numbers that we are speaking about in terms of capacity here <clears throat> uh what is not so obvious to me is the fact that under the electricity rules uh, it is the right of every consumer now to go for net metering for capacities less than 100 kilowatts i think it's not 10 it's actually 100 uh, i don't see any uh, any kind of a rooftop above 100 going under the scheme it's it's 3 kilowatt and very very small system so it would be fair to presume that virtually all of this capacity that's going to come up under the scheme is going to be net metered because it's a right under the under the electricity consumer rules so probably even it this comes have to compensate them on either a net net a net billing basis or on the net energy billing, basis yeah. yeah so that will happen so there will be a drain it will be interesting to see how i mean i'm sure uh, people are thinking about it uh, in the government in the policy wonks will come out with a discom incentive in fact the budget actually uh, earmarks uh, about 4000 plus crores in the 75000 crores as discom incentives uh, i'm not sure how uh, that is not a very significant amount it's a very marginal amount uh, so it would be interesting to see uh, how discoms get incentivized and uh, the perception that this could mean a drain on their balance sheet uh, gets mitigated uh, that would be an interesting space to watch we have a lot of questions coming up we have about 3 to 4 minutes before we dive into audience q and a and i have a couple of uh, questions uh, we we spoke about the challenges we spoke about the huge opportunity this presents to uh, vendors installers consumers financial institutions in terms of lending uh, what could go wrong i mean i'm just looking at the scheme as it stands today and this is a question to all of you i mean please feel free to pitch in what are the things that can go wrong and uh, what tweaks do you suggest so then you've already pointed out a couple of tweaks to make this a more robust and a better scheme uh, the floor is open yeah i want to uh, pitch in first over here uh, 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 as an as an financier uh, what we see or all financiers see is uh, this is not a commoditized product 
there is no standardization there is no consolidation that a single player is having a uh, 40% or a 50% market share the market is driven by 15 10000 to 15000 installers uh, uh, very hyper local business uh, uh, so so the challenge uh, is or what can go wrong is as there is no standardization after point in time after one year because we serve a customer as associated with financial for 3 years or 5 years let's say if it is 60 months loan after one year or two year down the line if there is there, there are any installation quality issues if the plant is not performing if something goes wrong then for customer and financier for us the, there is only one mediator who is a installer uh, so that is what i feel is the key uh, for longevity of the scheme or or success of the scheme in a long run is the installer community uh this is and and if something can go wrong is in the installation quality uh, and for a short term gain if they take some shortcuts uh, uh don't follow the standard practices i think these are the things which can which can go wrong which which we think yeah yeah, yeah. few things on uh, my uh, perspective is that the quality concerns okay now it is since it is purely going getting into retail mode and the and i was mentioning it's like going to be like a b2h model Uh, quality concern like many vendors try to increase their competitiveness and uh, they they will try to win their contracts by compromising on quality and safety and performance that is going to be a probable uh, challenge in this uh, scheme which i foresee another as uh, sopnil was mentioning the financial challenges i mean again i'll add few things like le- lengthy due diligence then processes concerned about customer credit worthiness and even collateral risks limited loan app options these are another uh, challenges might be coming up in this uh, and of course the low access to the low, uh, low cost financing that is another thing which i i foresee then another of course all, as as it is always the de- delay in the disbursement like uh, delay disbursement of subsidy can add i mean uh, uncertainty uh, uh, and this this can be another hindrance in the in the in the in the uh, traction of this particular scheme then the uh, there is always some hype is going around in few states like they are moving to gross metering and all of instead of net metering though uh, it is a hype but again if some states are going into that net uh, gross metering then there is going to be another challenges then the capping of the net metering a few states have capped uh, into various uh, this thing that is again uh, another challenge which can hinder in this then the operational challenges because here there is no uh fixed sla service uh, there is no fixed excel sla for any approvals or rejection of applications and uh, installation of the net meter or inspection of the system by the discoms we should discoms as too good like uh, chetan ji was mentioning gujarat has been the forefront flag bearer of this entire rooftop in the country holding more than 50% of the residential rooftop reason being there was a fantastic system available process available uh, and the, the discom was very cooperative they were doing reviews and uh, things were happening in the ground where as few states it is very very uh, lethargic and people are uh, discoms are not cooperating well for their with respect to their timeliness and approvals so these are the hindrances which i foresee in the in the in the right traction of this particular scheme thanks thanks sasil uh, if uh, there is no other comment on this we have 10 more minutes i would like to go through the uh, audience q and a uh, quite a few questions have come in uh, the first one is uh, somebody who is writing to us a delegate on this session saying that apartments and communities like my hometown pune india lack rooftop solar how can residents encourage adoption and navigate net metering challenges that second part has been addressed but <clears throat> there is a there is a variation of the subsidy for the residential uh, communities and residential welfare societies people staying in apartments for com- and so and that's targeted at uh, uh, common uh, common uh, utilities like the dg said the lifts and all that yeah. uh, how can you actually uh, promote uh, this scheme among this niche uh, audience of apartment communities that's the question energy is already there in the scheme there is a there are two segments one is the uh, residential standalone uh, uh, houses another is the residential welfare society for residential welfare society there is a subsidy of 18000 rupees per kilowatt and uh, any individual house uh, apartment in a apartment can avail up to 3 kilowatts so it is already there in the notification uh, residential welfare association for putting up a solar power plant in the common area you will get a subsidy of 18000 rupees over and above uh, one more clause is there a, an individual apartment can avail up to 3 kilowatt from the uh, total generated uh, this thing 
So it's already uh, articulated well in the in the notification. I think, Sasin, there is also a provision to incentivize the uh, setting up of solar uh, addition for for uh, powering the EV infrastructure also, right? Yes, yes. It's included in that, yeah. yeah. There's another question which uh, Cecil has already alluded to in his uh, in his uh, comments, and uh, it's a long-winded one, but I'll shorten this for you. Uh, how will how can the quality of installation and subsequent upkeep of the plant uh, be ensured? You spoke about the possible quality as a problem, but what can you really do to ensure quality of installation and uh, the subsequent SLA during the OEM period of the plant, which is almost for 2025 years? How do we ensure that? So, really, That's part because, of the scheme. So, Prill has already mentioned uh, we have a vendor base of almost 50,000. Reaching up to them directly it is a very Herculean task. What best we can do is that we can go up to our channel partners or distributors, maybe 100 numbers, and educate them and give a tutorial. This is the way we would like to have the installation on the roof. But again, controlling those vendors at the ground is a real, real mammoth task because uh, there will be a lot of uh, things uh, which is factoring in that the uh, awareness, the education level of the vendor, the condition of the roof, so many things. So uh, the standardization of the solar power plant is really a tough task. However, from our uh, like organization like Adani or any other player will definitely play a role in educating the vendors to ensure that we are conducting so many programs in various parts of the country and educating them. Please ensure that you are giving a quality job so that this is a 30 year uh, warranty we are giving so that your panel is intact, your plant is intact. And you'll get a better customer next time, correctly. But again, there is a limitation, Vinay. Cecil, there's a very pointed question uh, which they have addressed only to you. It says the residential solar opportunity is very huge now. What kind of efforts are taken by the Adani Group to increase skilled manpower <clears throat> in the market to support the PM's vision? This so, is Vinay, uh, we have we have already a school running in our Mundra for uh, uh, training the uh, training about the solar panel as such, but. Uh, for installation and all, we don't have a present uh, this thing, but we can definitely think about it. Apart from that, I mentioned we have come gone up to 4 gigawatt of cell and manufacturing, which is going to 10 gigawatt, which is going to ha happen very soon. So that is going to be a leap, I mean, a big jump in the overall DCR segment. But with respect to the uh, training of the manpower and all, uh, we have to daily uh, really uh, think about it. We have sakshams and few other activities happening in the Adani Foundation. Definitely we can amalgamate or sort of uh, integrate that along with our curriculum. That that we can definitely think about it, and we are taking it as a serious note on that. Thank you, Cecil. The next one is to Chetanji. It says uh, you are the brand ambassador for the India solar industry. Are you doing any awareness campaign to support this mission, and uh, any advice to government of India and citizens on this scheme? Well, I'm doing the awareness every day. That's what my job. <laughs> I live in a bus and 365 days, literally 365 days, only Diwali, Saturday, Sunday. Uh, I keep doing that. And it has already been 1,210 uh, plus days that I'm doing it as part of my Yatra. Wow. And the uh, advice to the government, I already mentioned, uh, Vinayji, that you know uh, we can use the same uh, funding uh, available uh, in this scheme. But at the same time, ensure that uh, the solar energy is also used with, uh, with caution and with efficiency uh, so that this real dream of energy independence or energy storage, you know, when our energy needs goes down, I believe strongly that it makes even greater sense to be, you know, connection free or grid free. And then in sense, a person becomes actually a sensible user because when your generation is fixed, you're always going to be a careful user of energy. You know, when your salary is fixed, your expenses are also fixed. So the real energy Suraj comes when people disconnect themselves, you know, and become Atmanirbhar. And that is the real foundation of Atmanirbhar Bharat, you know. And uh, I developed a school uh, for everyone else, which is a 14-acre school campus in Madhya Pradesh in Khargon district. Uh, we were built in 2010. Since 2010 till today, there is no electricity connection ever taken. It runs 100% on solar energy. So what I'm saying is, let us all switch to solar energy 100%, but even greater way of doing is become independent, Atmanirbhar. And if individual and institution starts becoming independent, the whole country will become independent because our, our expenditure on energy import is 16,000, 16 lakh crore every single year. That's a huge burden on the country. So uh, in Gayatri Parivar, in, they say, Ki hum sudre to jag sudrega. Hum Atmanirbhar bane to desh Atmanirbhar banega. And all those individuals who can afford to do that, I would strongly recommend them 
uh, to become part of this energy swaraj movement become independent and help country help reducing carbon emission and uh, you know help solving the problem of climate change because if, when you are net metered you know the problem is even in the night hour somebody has to supply you electricity and that That's electricity right. is going to come from the coal and that coal is going to be burned every single day and that's why becoming grid free is even a in a better option if you can afford to do so thank you jyoti that's a very inspiring idea to go grid free i think that's a it's a aspirational goal which we should all aspire for uh, happy that you know you bring this to our attention the next one is to sharath this is specifically pointed to you it says uh, already 1 crore people have applied for this scheme how much more can we expect in 2 years time any idea on the size of business vendors can gain i think already uh, it has been 2 months since the scheme has been launched and uh, uh, while the scheme was in initially envisaged uh, to be uh, seeing a subscriber base of around 1 crore across the country but there is no cap on the number of uh, applicants that can register for the scheme so right now i think uh, in in a span of 2 to 3 months in 2 months we have seen a total uh, registration count of almost close to 3 crores in fact uh, what we have envisaged initially was 1 crore but what we are sitting on right now is an applicant pool of 3 crores and perhaps not all of them will be eligible for this scheme because the roof has to be uh, integral and there has to be a credit profile for the applicant so on and so forth there will be guidelines for this uh, but i think the scheme will eventually expand because if you look at the overall saturation potential of this rooftop solar in the country uh, we have 25 crore households and right now the the step that we have taken is only the starting step and i i strongly uh, foresee that uh, there will be variants to the scheme coming uh, in the coming years also uh, i i think this is not the end of it all this is a beginning and uh, eventually 630 uh, 625 gigawatt of uh, rooftop solar is not something that any government can ignore uh, so i think there will be more uh, registrations that will come in the future thanks thanks for that sharath uh, there's one question specifically to swapnil next it says uh, can you guide me i pay around 5000 rupees electricity bill i hope that is every month if yeah. i install 3 kilowatt how much will be the cost how much will be the government subsidy and how much loan can i avail and what's the procedure to apply yeah so if if you put a 3 uh, kilowatt system it will cost roughly around 180000 like you will get 78000 as a subsidy uh, which will be deposited in your account probably after commissioning within 15 to 30 days uh, so you will get financing for balanced 1 lakh you have to pay 20000 as a down payment uh, to your to your installer remaining 80000 or 80 to 85000 will get financed on 1 1 lakh rupees for 5 years the emi is roughly around 2300 to 2400 roughly i'm just giving a rough numbers uh, uh, so roughly you will be paying around 2000 200 to 2200 as a monthly emi as compared to uh, your electricity bill of 3500 to 4 3500 to 4000 so month on month you will be saving 1500 to 2000 rupees by putting up 3 kilowatt rooftop solar system so there is a direct uh, 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 benefit to the consumers yeah thanks uh, swapnil appreciate that follows, just sorry if he follows the amg rule then he yeah. will like, he will come down to 3000 rupees and then he will save everything yes okay <laughs> and and vinay uh, just just wanted to add one little bit uh, to what swapnil had said uh, for the one who has asked this question i think uh, there are other options as well to make it zero uh, there is zero investment on behalf of the consumer when they adopt to go for the resco model so uh, yeah. that is also an option that exists in the market and yes. they can even explore that yes thanks thanks uh, for that uh, I think we have come to the four o'clock uh, deadline for winding this up. Uh, thanks everyone for uh, coming on this panel and then sharing your thoughts on this wonderful scheme, ambitious scheme, and scheme that kind of indicates and evidences some fresh thinking on the entire sector, which has been lacking for a very long time. The time is for optimism, not for cynicism. There is twenty-five gigawatts to be done, and we have already three crore households have already, as as Sharad said. they will defile their application so it's uh, already three times oversubscribed so we that's a good problem to have uh, with uh, uh, with backing of uh, capital with uh, a very enabling framework for legislation around all all of rooftops around net metering i'm sure the scheme will take off there will be a lot of tweaks there will be a lot of challenges but 
nothing that we have already not seen so far and to just wind up with the context a small country like vietnam in a covid year uh, they did about 8 gigawatts of rooftops oh yeah. fantastic in a, in a single year when I mean, there were a lot of incentives but in a single year they did 8 gigawatts of rooftops and after 10 years of national solar mission after 14 years actually we yeah. still around 8 to 10 gigawatts of uh, and india has potential and uh, this scheme i believe is the first of a series of uh, schemes to unlock that huge potential that india has for rooftops and it will happen uh, on that note uh, i will hand this over to amit uh, thanks everyone again and thanks for having us thank you so a big thank, thank you, you to our moderator vinay ji thank you so much sir for moderating this session uh, i'd also like to thank our panelists professor chetan mr cecil mr sarat and mr swapnil for being part of this elite panel uh, we are elated to state that the audience had been very proactive uh, and they wanted to know more about the pm suregar muft bijli yojana and i trust that apna ghar suregar webinar helped answer their queries in fact it will be a we need to do a series of webinars and we need to do series of programs to answer the queries which had been coming across but yes uh, to the in the interest of time we could only share a couple of questions so uh, ladies and gentlemen to know more about india's journey to net zero i would request all of us to join at india's biggest uh, south india's biggest renewable energy show renewex which is scheduled from 26 to 27th of april in hyderabad i would also request you to register yourself for our upcoming webinar which is mainstreaming top con technology adoption in india and expert perspective on 10th of april this is amit signing out thank you so much Have a good day. Thank you, Amit. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for inviting me. Thank you, everyone. Yeah. Thanks.